Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, uh, getting near the end of what I'm recording. I still have to record the vermouth episode even though that was the episode you saw in the first group of stuff because vermouth's gonna blow the palate out. Um, so I'm excited about doing this wine because I was at Costco uh, quite a while ago. I think I've had this wine for at least a year. And um, actually I think I did buy this while I was recovering from heart surgery um, and I couldn't drink any alcohol. So um, we were in Costco, and so fun fact about Texas Costco, uh, I'm, I'm sure other states are like this, but just a reminder, every state has slightly different things about their laws, their alcohol laws, but you do not have to be a member of Costco to go into a Costco to buy wine. So they can't make you be a member to buy alcohol. Now in Texas, They'll have liquor stores that are next door to the Costco. They're independent retailers, but they're like somehow associated with Costco. Uh, and those follow the normal uh, operating hours in Texas, which are Monday through Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. closed on Sundays and certain holidays, whereas Costco is open, you know, different hours. So um, anyway, so we're in there and I see this Brunello for $26.99, for 27 bucks. Like, you don't find Brunello for like under 40. And that's even hard. 40 bucks for Brunello is really hard. Usually like 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks for Brunello. So I'm like, we gotta try this. It's Kirkland. So the 2013 Kirkland uh, Brunello Montalcino. So if you don't know, Kirkland Signature is the um, Costco brand uh, for everything. And, uh, I've been very impressed with just Kirkland as a quality level, not, not necessarily wine, but just like quality level for everything that they do. So I'm like, I'm totally intrigued. Now, there's not much to find on this wine, uh, but there's a, there's a thing called the Costco Wine Blog. I'll try to link that one up. Um, according to this blog, the 10 was the first uh, vintage of the Brunello. And um, then the guy was like, oh, super excited because the 10 was great. Then he tried the 11, 11 wasn't so great. Then he tried the 12, and I was like, I stopped reading after that because we were getting to the 13. So um, 2699. 50% still, but it doesn't say it's charging. If I unplugged it, plugged it back into the power bank. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's brown. So six years old. Um, you definitely see the oxidation. It's not brown, but it's browning. Um, wow. Definitely a slightly oxidized. Kind of a, a, not quite raisinated, but somewhat pruney on the nose. but also like a, like a sweetness, almost raisinated, but it really isn't aromatic. Well, this nostril's completely stopped up, so. Yeah, slightly resonated, raisinated, a little, not quite leathery, but somewhat of a VA issue, not issue, but a little bit of VA, but it's really, really closed on the nose. Let's just try it. It 
it's definitely big. The tannins are, are, are there. Um, it's not shy. Um, yeah, slightly resonate, resonated on the fruit. Um, kind of that cherry, <laughs> cherry, but also kind of plummy, pruny almost, somewhat fig date type of thing going on. Um, the quote, leather dust felt accordion case that I get with Italian wines a lot. It's, it's somewhat present there, but it's probably because I'm looking for because I know what the wine is. Uh, if I was doing a blind, I might, I might miss it, but there's a, also a, just a touch of volatile acidity, which again is stylistically correct for Italian wines as, as a category, but it's not like over the top, like you're not like going, oh my God, okay? Like it's, you know, sometimes Italian wines like, oh, it's a characteristic. No, it's a freaking fault, dude, but I still love it, right? But yeah, the, the fruit smells somewhat raisinated sweeter, and it's kind of like that way in the palate, but it's lighter in, in, in taste, but the tannin's there, and the acid's definitely elevated. Is it as... Memorable, like is it as impactful? That's the best way to put it. As the other three reds that I had, no. So I kind of feel like maybe I should have done this one first um, to kind of get into it, even though that, um, which one was it? This one was like, was it this? No, it wasn't the Syrah. I think it was this one. It was, I think this is when I said it was like light. Um, yeah, because I said that one was kind of like Beaujolais-like. And it's not light in the sense that, I mean, it's still got some power to it because the tannins are there. But flavor-wise, it's like mouthfeel, like, like that is not really intense. I like the wine, but I'm going to have to say it's out of the eight wines I've actually had, it's the one that isn't as uh, impactful. But it's still good. Uh, I'm very, I'm very impressed for $27 to get a Brunello that tastes good, that doesn't taste like really bad. It's definitely good. I mean, you're not going to go wrong for spending $27 on a Brunello at Costco. Now, is, is the 13 a current vintage? Maybe, maybe not. It's been probably close to a year since I bought it, so we're probably on the 14. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, if you see it, get it. It's still good quality. It's just not like a big bombastic Brunello for like $80 or 70 or 60, but um, it's still really good. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to uh, find out more about the wine. I'll just try to put that costcowineblog.com uh, link on that and hit over here to help me with uh, offsetting costs for Oregon. And we'll see you again next time. <laughs>